says that we certainly it is we who created you moreover above and beyond that we didn't just create you we molded you Allah created the skies and the earth Allah created the mountains Allah created beautiful waterfalls Allah created an expansive universe Allah created these, these gorgeous snow crystals ice crystals Allah has beauty in everything that he created but he doesn't go out of his way to describe the beauty of something beyond just saying that He created it. But he, when He talks about us, He says He didn't just create you, He moreover molded you, crafted you. And the idea of molding, the idea of taswir in the Arabic language, those of you that are familiar with Urdu, taswir is like a picture, but that's actually surah in Arabic. But taswir is actually molding or crafting something. And the idea is that this is done out of a sense of art. It's not done out of need. If you just have the need to create something, بَلْ خَلَقْتَهُ But if you create something and then you want to decorate it and beautify it and perfect it, then you take that next step and you do taswir of it. You do molding and crafting of it. Allah Azza wa Jal describes that the human being was molded and crafted. In other places in the Qur'an, Allah will use the origin of the word husn. So Allah Azza wa Jal will say, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Very famous ayah from Surah Al-Teen. We created the human being in the most beautiful and the most upright in, in, in the most beautiful of upright fashions. Allah Azza wa Jal will say in Surah Al-Taghabun, He'll say, خَلَقَكُمْ فَأَحْسَنَ you know, صُوَرَكُمْ صَوَّرَكُمْ فَأَحْسَنَ صُوَرَكُمْ He molded you and He beautified the molding. He takes that even a step further. It's not just molding which is beautiful in and of itself, He added another layer of beauty. This is important to note because Allah Azza wa Jal brings special attention in the Qur'an to the beauty and attractiveness of the human being. The human being is an attractive creature. He's a beautiful and she's a beautiful creature of Allah. And this is a very powerful force in humanity. As a matter of fact, the industry surrounding beauty, even in the world today, is one of the most capitalistic industries there can be. From everything from the cosmetics industry, to the fashion industry, the clothing industry, right? The, 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 the film industry, what, how do they pick actors and actresses or models and things like that? And even certain filthy industries, they actually pick up on the idea that human beings are inherently beautiful and are themselves attracted to the beauty of other human beings and they capitalize on that and make countless amounts of money off of this idea. So this is a very powerful thing that Allah Azza wa Jal endowed the human being with, the man and the woman with. Now, after having said that, we know that this is actually, I was telling you this is the story of Adam alayhi salam. And I think everybody here knows at least some details about the story of Adam alayhi salam. The only instruction Allah had given to our parents in Jannah was don't go near this tree. لا تقربا هذه الشجرة Don't go, either of you stay away from this tree, stay far away from this tree. That was the only instruction. And you would imagine, if you don't know the text of the Qur'an carefully, you would imagine that shaitan's goal, shaitan's goal is to get our parents to eat from that tree. That's his goal. Allah Azza wa Jal does not describe that as shaitan's goal. That's what I expected. I expected shaitan's goal is, Allah says don't go near the tree, shaitan's goal is going to be get them near the tree, get them to eat from the tree. In Baqarah Allah will say, azallahuma shaitan. Shaitan caused both of them to slip. The devil caused both of them to slip. We still don't know what exactly that slip is. But in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah doesn't just tell us what shaitan did. Allah told us his motivation. So why does he want us to go near the tree? Is the eating from the fruit, the forbidden fruit, is that his goal? Or is there some other goal that he has in mind that will destroy the human being? You have to understand that even at the end of the day, Adam salam was told one particular tree, the fruit of that tree is haram. It's impermissible for you to eat from that tree. And he and our mother made the historical mistake and we ate from that tree. But if you think about it from a logical point of view, we make lots of mistakes in life. And human beings, when they've come on this earth, they do some pretty bad things. People kill, rape, pillage, rob, steal, invade, take over other people's property, deny rights, abuse. We do all kinds of horrible things. And when you compare all of those things to eating a fruit, then it doesn't seem like such a bad thing. And actually even in the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa says, أَزَلَّهُمَا He caused them to slip. 
he caused them to slip. He doesn't, he, you would think this is the biggest mistake ever made in the history of humanity. And Allah Azza wa reduces it to what? A slip. He describes it as a slip. But Shaytan saw something more than just a fruit. He saw something more than just going near a tree. He had a very particular agenda. And that's what I wanted to highlight before you today. The first part of my khutbah seems unrelated to this part. In the first part I told you Allah created the human beings as beautiful and very attractive. Now listen to what Allah Azza wa describes from the mind of shaitan. Allah is taking us inside the mind of shaitan. فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ shaitan. Then shaitan continually whispered to them and disappeared. وَسْوَسَ يعني hamasa wa ghaba. Hamasa wa ghaba. He would go and say and then he would disappear. Then he'd whisper again and they would, they would dis disappear. The idea was you have to constantly bombard someone with a message before they accept it. This is the very nature of propaganda. Why do you think they run ads over and over again? until you memorize the jingle. The idea, until the waswasa is done to you over and over again, it's not gonna become part of your thinking. You know, you see a Coke commercial eight or 10 times, and all of a sudden I'm having Coke for iftar. And you don't even know where it came from. It was planted in your head. The idea of waswasa is keeps on suggesting something to them. Now, what is this goal? Allah says, لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا أُورِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِن سَوْآتِهِمَا لَمْ يَذْكُرِ الشَّجَرَ he says, shaitan kept whispering to them, listen to this carefully, so he could expose before both of them what was covered of them from their ugliness, meaning their naked bodies. Now this is difficult to understand because just a few moments ago in an ayah in the same surah, Allah said He created us what? Beautiful. And now he's saying shaitan wanted that, he, that our parents were exposed to each other in their ugliness, meaning in their nudity. That he wanted to remove their clothes from them. That was his goal. Now what in the world, first of all there are two problems here. Why isn't he saying the shaitan just wanted them to eat from the tree? And the second problem is, why is all of a sudden Allah saying the same body that he made beautiful is now ugly? Why in the world would he say that? This is the problem that humanity must understand, but especially believers must understand. Allah Azza wa made this body beautiful. And actually, the, a, a man is, couldn't be more attracted than he is to a woman. The strongest of attractions that was put inside of a man is the attraction a man has for a woman. It's a very powerful force. As a matter of fact, it's so powerful that the same language is used for it in the Quran, that the same was used for the tree. لا تقرب هذه الشجرة لا تقرب الزنا لا تقرب الفواحش Don't go near adultery. Don't go near committing illicit relationship with a woman. Don't go near any form of shamelessness or lewdness. So it's dangerous. And it's something that just like the tree, you go near it, you're gonna get sucked in. You're not even gonna realize how far you've gone. You thought it just it was just a look, and you kind of liked what she looked like, and you looked again, and then she smiled, and you smiled back, and then things kind of started rolling from there. And then you know, it just, things get out of hand. And before you know it, you're wrapped up in something, and you don't even know how to get out. So this, the idea of you not going near it is good advice. Because you don't even know where to stop. And when you get to a certain point, you can't stop. You're locked in. So Allah Azza wa now describes that when human beings expose themselves to each other, outside the command of Allah, outside the command of Allah, then that is in fact the ultimate ugliness. A, relation, a man and a woman are supposed to have a beautiful loving relationship. Allah made us beautiful for a reason. So we would be attracted to one another. But then He created an institution by which this relationship could be made legitimate. That this relationship should be made legitimate. But when human beings, because of their attraction to the opposite gender, seek that relationship, but they seek it in a way that is not approving to Allah, then that same relationship that they got into because of beauty, because of attraction, that same relationship actually becomes ugly. And it's not just the ugliness of a physical body. Somebody listening to this says, well, you know, I have a girlfriend, but she's beautiful still. I don't see how she got ugly after the Quran was revealed. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. There's an ugliness inside you. There's a goodness inside you that dies. Human beings weren't just made beautiful physically. Human beings were made beautiful morally, spiritually, ethically. Human beings were made beautiful in their personalities. And when you engage in an illicit relationship, then some of that beauty that you have is gone. 
some of that goodness that Allah gave you starts getting stripped away from you. You'll, see, you'll feel it being pulled away from you. So you'll find a young man who has an illegitimate relationship with some girl or whatever, or a girl the other way around, you'll notice that they're getting nastier and nastier with their parents. And they have a bigger and bigger anger problem. Like this relationship is there, but it's bringing out an ugliness in their life in other parts of their life. And you can't even tell where this came from. This is the, this is the sawad, this is the ugliness. And this ugliness, by the way, in Arabic you say qabaha, is qabih, is ugly. Now what is this sawa? Sawa actually in Arabic means a corpse. Nothing is uglier to the human eye than seeing a dead body. We find it disgusting. The smell of it, the look of it, the deteriorated flesh, the, the, you know, the skin, etc., etc., the, 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 the insects and the worms all around it. All of that stuff is hideous for us to think. That's the image Allah Azza wa describes. In other words, your body is fully alive, but your soul starts dying. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.